Autolite and its 96,000 dealers bring you Mr. Robert Young in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents a story about a man who commits a murder efficiently and safely, only to find there was a witness. The story is called A Murder of Necessity, starring Mr. Robert Young. Great performance, eh, Harlow? Ah, it sure is, Hap. Reminds me of the outstanding performance of that team combination of precision-made units, including the Autolite generator, starting motor, coil distributor, and all the other important parts of the complete Autolite electrical system in your Autolite-equipped car. I know, Harlow, but I'm talking about the show. Ah, and what a show that Autolite electrical system puts on, Hap. It works every time you start and run your car... Blow your horn, light your lights, or use your electric windshield wiper, cigarette lighter, radio, or heater. And every unit is related by Autolite engineering design and manufacturing skill to give you the smoothest performance money can buy. Yes. Well, here's the next act, Harlow. The next act, friends, is to specify Autolite original factory parts when replacements are needed for your Autolite-equipped car. Because from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, with A Murder of Necessity and the performance of Mr. Robert Young, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. I'm walking along a city street with murder in my heart. Tonight is the night I must kill. Remember the name, Herbie Sachs. Fat, sweaty Herbie Sachs. He'll be sitting behind his big desk and he'll look up at me and smile and his fat neck will spill over the expensive collar of the expensive shirt that he'll be wearing. So far, so good. No one around. So far, so good. Why do I keep saying that? Some sign painter will have a new job. Scrape the name in gold letters off the glass door. Herbert J. Sachs, private investigator, will soon be dead, gentlemen. Through the panel of the glass door, the fat shadow of the big man sitting happily in his swivel chair. Mr. Sachs waits within, murderer. Knock on his door. Oh, uh, hold it a minute. The janitor wants to come in. Gets up from the chair, Herbie. Come and open the door. Meet your doom. Start in the other office. Oh. Hello, Mark. What do you want? few moments of your time. Well, I'm busy. Let's make it some... Inside, Herbie. Go ahead, Herbie. Sit down. Well, what do you want? Herbie, I'm through. You've bled me for the last nickel. What are you talking about? I made a mistake a long time ago. I went hunting and I killed a man. It was an accident. But instead of turning myself in and getting off on a charge of manslaughter, I listened to the advice of a man named Herbie Sachs. Go home, Mark. Nobody saw you shoot him, you said. Nobody did, except you, Herbie. I'll be silent, said Herbie. Now, look, Mark. I've had to pay for your silence. Haven't I, Herbie? Through the nose. Who do you think you are? Coming here like this? Why, for two cents... For two cents, you'd sell your mother, your grandmother, and your wife, Gretchen. A nice girl who doesn't deserve you. I'm warning you, Mark. You're through warning people, Herbie. I wonder how many others will breathe easier when once they learn you're no longer exercising the big stick. Uh, What what are you going to do? This. (laughs) Now the sign painter can scrape the gold letters off the glass door. Herbert J. Sachs sits dead in his swivel chair. The blood running a crazy pattern down the front of his expensive shirt. His mouth silent. No words. No accusations. No talk of any kind. No talk... Wait. Wait. Herbie was talking to somebody when I knocked on the door. Nobody here. Who was he talking to? Must have been talking to somebody on the telephone. He didn't hang it up. Hello? Hello? Who's there? 
Please don't. The phone in Herbie's desk drawer had been off the hook. Herbie had been talking to someone on the phone. Who had it been? Somebody I knew? Somebody I didn't know? Somebody like Herbie who'd make me suffer some more? I had to find out. But how? How? I got an idea. The phone pad. Today, March 24th, and under the date, three names. L. Collins, the name Janice, and a phone number, and an Art Lafoon. Could it have been one of them? On the phone, you heard... What? Was it a radio? Was it a record? That's all you have to go on, but it'll have to be enough. Even now, whoever it was may be calling the police. Down in the corner drugstore, I look up L. Collins. There's only one. Strange for a name like Collins, but only one. Lucius Collins, who lives on North Woodburn Drive. A taxi gets me there in 20 minutes. Yes? Uh, Mrs. Lucius Collins? Yes. Is, um, is your husband at home? Yes. Do you want to see him? If it's possible. Come in. Just follow me. What did you say your name was? I didn't say, but it's, uh, Paul. Paul Drake. Oh. Lucius, there's a Mr. Drake who wants to see you. Drake? Yes, Mr. Collins. A mutual friend asked me to call. I'd like to speak to you alone, if I may. I'll close the door. Mr. Collins. Uh... Oh, uh, sit down, Mr. Drake. Thank you. You said a mutual friend sent you? Who? who... Herbie Sachs sent me, Mr. Collins. What does he want? He's not satisfied with the present setup. Mr. Drake, I'm paying him all I can now. I can't pay any more. If I did, my wife might find out, then... How would I explain it? Doesn't Mr. Sachs understand that? He's not satisfied, Mr. Collins. That's all I can tell you. But what am I going to do? Well, Herbie just gave me a general picture of your situation. Perhaps if you filled me in on the details... There are no details, Mr. Drake. I I made a mistake once. I met a girl. We grew fond of each other. Naturally, my wife suspected something was wrong. She went to Mr. Sachs and had him trail me. He found out about us, the girl and me, but he didn't tell my wife. He said he wouldn't tell her if I paid him. And so I did. The girl went away, but I still pay Mr. Sachs. I understand, Mr. Collins. You do? You really do? Uh, have you been home all evening, Mr. Collins? Well, yes. Uh, I guess I'll just tell Herbie what you told me. If you can't increase it, you can't do it. That, uh, radio over there looks like an old one. Huh? Oh, it is. We, we've had that for years. It's broken. Haven't bothered to have it fixed. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got a phonograph? Yes, an old one. <laughs> the kind you wine's not much good. It's up in the attic, stored away. Well, uh, thanks, Mr. Collins. Thanks? I mean, for seeing me, for uh, letting me talk to you. Well, I don't understand it. A man like you working for Herbie Sachs? I know, Mr. Collins. I don't seem like the kind that would. That poor little man, if only I could have told him, whispered to him, yelled to him, Mr. Collins, your unhappiness is over. The man who held you in the arms of terror is no more. He's dead. He's up in his office, spilling blood all over his nice, clean carpet. You're a free man, free to pick up the pieces of your life and start again. But tomorrow you'll know. It'll be in all the papers. That'll be soon enough. First name on the list, I check off. Lucius Collins is a man with problems of his own. He didn't play his broken radio or the old phonograph stored away up in his attic. So I call the phone number next to the name on the pad that reads Janice. Just pick it up and walked away with it. Uh, Leon Spar, tech speaking. Is Janice there? Uh, yeah, but she's awful busy waiting on tables. Can I give her a message? No. Uh... I'll call later. 
Okay. I found Leon's bar downtown on Main. It was a cheap place, but it was full of people. Then I saw the girl waiting on the tables. She was pretty, but a prettiness that was cheap like the bar. I walked over to an empty booth in the corner and sat down. I waited. Then she saw me and came over and stood beside me. What do you have? Whiskey and water. Whiskey and water, right. Janice, hmm? come here a minute. Yeah? What is it? I want to talk to you. Look, I'm awful busy right now. Herbie sent me. I didn't get your name. Drake. Paul Drake. Herbie sent you? Yes, Herbie sent me. For what? What does Herbie usually want? What kind of a holdup is this? Twice in one week. Herbie's an ugly man, isn't he, Janice? You're a funny guy. I'd almost get the impression you didn't like him. Well, it isn't necessary for an employee to like his employer, is it? No. What are you? His collection agency? In a sense. I'm also an advisor of his. What do you mean? Sometimes I advise him about his clients. Perhaps I could advise him about you. What would you advise him? I think you're a pretty girl, a very pretty girl, Janice. I'd advise him of that. You shouldn't say things like that. Why not? Because they're not true. Yes, they are. What do you want from me, mister? I'd like to take you home tonight to where you live. That's all I want. That's a lot. I think you're pretty, Janice. I told you. I get off in an hour. (laughs) You can take me home. In an hour. She got up from the table and walked across the room. There was something strange about this girl, something I didn't understand, but something I had to find out. She stopped at the jukebox in the corner of the bar next to the phone booth and dropped a dime into the machine. That's when I heard the song again. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Robert Young in A Murder of Necessity. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Well, Harlow, I'll admit it's the best system going. And it's always going when your car is, huh? The Autolite electrical system that works every second your engine runs as well as when you blow your horn, light your lights, or use your electric windshield wiper, cigarette lighter, radio, or heater. And the Autolite electrical system is used by the finest, Harlow. Yes, sir, Hap, as original equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars, trucks, and tractors. And in the Autolite electrical system, every unit and component part is related by Autolite engineering design and manufacturing skill to give you the smoothest performance money can buy. That's why it pays to keep your car running right. Right you are, Hap. So, friends, make it a point to see your car dealer or authorized Autolite service station soon. You can easily locate your nearest authorized Autolite service station in the classified section of your telephone directory under Automobile Electrical Service. Or you can call Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. She will gladly tell you his location. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Robert Young in Elliot Lewis's production of A Murder of Necessity, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Well. Oh. <laughs> nice music. You like it? My favorite record. I play it all the time. You do? Mm-hmm. Well, should we go? I'll call a cab. You don't have to. Why not? 
Ride home in style. It's only a couple of blocks from here. We can walk. Wouldn't you like to walk? All right. Beautiful night. Not a cloud in the sky. Mm, I love fresh air. What's your last name, Janice? <laughs> I've got a lot of them. Call me Janice Gibson. All right, Janice Gibson. What kind of a girl are you, Janice? If you work for Herbie Sachs, you know all about me. Not the details, pretty girl. Why do you keep saying pretty girl? Because it's a statement of fact. You are pretty, Janice. I'm the kind of a girl that you read about in the confession magazines. Only they make those stories up. They're fiction. My story's not fiction. It's a real one. I believe you. Long time ago, a girl with big ideas came out of the sticks, landed in the big city. And she met a man named Herbie Sachs. She met him after she'd gone off the deep end. She wanted thrills. Those thrills ended her up in a straitjacket in a sanitarium. They were the kind of thrills you don't write the family back home about. Mm -hmm. But uh, how does Herbie figure? Herbie is a man with many ways and means. And when the girl ended up in an addict, Herbie was the big brother. He had a soft shoulder and he stretched out a helping hand. Mm -hmm. After I was cured, he told me I had to pay him for his silence. The silence that would keep the family back home from finding out about the thrilling things that had happened to the girl from the sticks. Are you over those thrills, pretty girl? Yes. Well over them. That's good. Why do you work for a man like him? Oh, check it off to living. Were you at the bar all night tonight? Ever since 8 o'clock, why? Nothing. I guess I'm making conversation because I don't want to talk to you anymore. Look, mister, you can walk on the other side of the street. I didn't no, ask wait a minute. To... I didn't mean it that way, Janice. Honest, believe me. I. What I meant was I didn't want to talk because I suddenly feel like kissing you. This is where I live. The bug house. Want to come up and meet the fleas? Courtesy of Herbie Sachs. Janice, don't be bitter. I got one room and a hot plate. What am I supposed to do? Dance or dance because I can't afford anything better? Look, I'll... Uh... I'll talk to Herbie. I'm his advisor, remember? Maybe I'll advise him to change his mind. If you thought you could... I'll try. That much I promise. I'll advise him that you ought to have a nice apartment to live in. And a stove. Pa? Yes? You want to come upstairs? I'll make you some coffee. Well, I have something to take care of, and it's late. To... Maybe after... You won't come back. Once you leave, I won't see you anymore. You're that kind of guy. I'll come back. I won't see you again. I know I won't. Kiss me, Paul. Hard. Like you were going away for a long time. Oh. Come upstairs. Let me make you some coffee. I'll be back. Paul. Janice, someday if you ever find out that this is all over, go back home to, to where there aren't thrilling things for a girl like you to do. I don't know. They'll never know. Home is a long, faraway memory. I... I don't know. Promise me. On the kiss. Maybe. Maybe, Paul. Maybe. I took her in my arms and kissed her again. Then she turned and disappeared through the door into the cheap boarding house. And the black night closed in on me again and the fear and fright returned. Under the street light up at the corner, I checked the last name on the phone pad. Art LaFoon. He's not at his place of business on Houston Avenue, the watchman tells me. Mr. LaFoon is never at his place of business at 2.30 in the morning, he says with raised eyebrows. Even though it is a novelty business, and novel things are always happening. So I wait until 8 o'clock the following morning. 
Near his novelty business, I find a very shabby hotel, and for two dollars, the night clerk tells me that I can have a bed with a clean sheet and a loud knock on my door when it's seven o'clock. By five minutes after eight, I'm standing in front of Mr. LaFoon's novelty business on the third floor. My hand closed tightly around a piece of blue steel that means death for Mr. LaFoon. Yeah, all right, Midge. There's a shipment I'll get out to you on Friday. Okay, okay. I promise you, Midge. And when LaFoon makes a promise, he keeps his word. Okay, kid, I'll see you. Ah, hello, brother. Mr. LaFoon? That's it, brother LaFoon. Anything that's novel or new, see LaFoon. Here, let me show you these small telescopes we just got in. I made some a couple of years ago, but those were tame. Here, take a look at this one. Look, go uh, ahead, go ahead, just squint your eye. <laughs> you gotta focus. Herbie sent me. Yeah, I was. What was that, brother? Herbie Sachs. Yeah. You mentioned the name Herbie Sachs. What am I supposed to do? You know Herbie. Who are you anyway? I work for Herbie Sachs. You made another statement. Tell me how to react, brother. Hey, look, Mr. Novelty, man, I don't know how to convince you, but I'll get rough if I have okay, to. Okay, okay, take it easy, brother, take it easy. That's an expensive shirt. That's why I'm here. Uh, Herbie doesn't like you buying such expensive shirts. Who are you? I'm recently hired to make collections. I've come to collect. You know what? I think you're lying. You don't work for Herbie Sachs. You don't work for him at all. I told you I was just recently hired. And why didn't he tell me you'd be around, brother? I talked to him on the phone last night. Why didn't he tell me, huh? You talked to Herbie on the phone last night? Yeah, brother, I talked to him. What happened when you talked to Herbie? What do you mean, what happened? Who are you, brother? Nobody you'd be interested in. Yeah? Well, maybe the cops would be interested. Put it down. Get your hands off of me. <laughs> Later, Mr. LaFoon. Later, we'll take care of some unfinished business when it's dark and no one will see me. I got out of the building. I had to before someone saw me, saw my face and would recognize it again. But tonight when it's dark, I'll wait for you and follow you, Mr. LaFoon. It was you on the phone. Now I know. Buy a paper and go home. Lay low. When I get home, I open the paper, and there it is, on page two, an account of the death of Herbert J. Sachs, the private investigator, shot through the chest twice by an unknown assailant. How soon would it be before Mr. LaFoon would tell the police the name of the unknown assailant? Long enough, because LaFoon was the kind of man who'd wait for the killer to get in touch with him. LaFoon was the kind of man who could be bribed. And then while I tried to sleep... Herbie's wife. Yeah. Hello, Gretchen. Did you read about Herbie in the papers this morning? Yeah, I read, Gretchen. I want to talk to you, Mark. Talk? It's important. Can you come out to the house? Have the police been out to the house yet? No. I was down for a few minutes at the morgue to identify the body. That's all? That's all. It's important that I talk to you. I was on the other end of the phone, Mark. Why didn't you answer me when I picked up the receiver? I had to take time to think things through. Have you thought them through? Yes. Will you come out to the house and talk to me? Yes. Gretchen, I'll be out. In a little while. I'll wait for you. It was Herbie's own wife, Gretchen, on the phone. Sweet and lovable Gretchen. And now the wife of the man I murdered waits to talk with me. What about? The weather? No. No, she waits to talk business. Before the police arrive, she waits to take up where the fat man left off. Another murder of necessity. Ring the doorbell, murderer. Hello, Mark. Come in. Mark! 
Oh. Oh, Mark. You fool. You fool. I'm sorry, Gretchen. I... I hated him. I hated him. What, what are you saying? I, I couldn't stand him. Everything he was, I, I hated. He... He wouldn't let me go. No. I... I don't believe you. Last night, I... I called him on the telephone. Called him to tell him to come home. Because... No, no. When he got home, Mark, I was going to kill him. Uh, uh... Gretchen. Operator. Operator. Get me police headquarters. I just committed a murder. That wasn't necessary. At all. Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Robert Young. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite, world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Our Autolite family is made up of the nearly 30,000 men and women in 28 great Autolite plants from coast to coast and in still other Autolite plants in many foreign countries. It also includes more than 18,000 people who have invested a portion of their savings in Autolite, as well as 96,000 Autolite distributors and dealers in the United States and thousands more in Canada and throughout the world. On April 1st, Autolite will present the national television preview of the great Parade of Stars automobile show from the Grand Ballroom of New York's Waldorf Astoria Hotel. This program may be seen at the regular Autolite Suspense television time on April 1st, or a few days later in some television areas. Don't miss this great program. And remember to be with us next week for another thrilling Autolite Suspense show on radio. Next week, our star will be Miss Deborah Carr as a girl who chose a most dangerous way of making a living and bet her life on its success. A story true except for changes in names and places, which we call The Colonel's Lady. Presented on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis with music composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. A Murder of Necessity was written for suspense by Richard George Pettuccini. Featured in tonight's cast were Paula Winslow, Charlotte Lawrence, Joe Gilbert, Howard McNear, Lou Merrill, and Joseph Kearns. Robert Young, star of Father Knows Best, appeared through the courtesy of the Crosley Corporation. And remember next week on Suspense, Miss Deborah Carr in The Colonel's Lady. This is the CBS Radio Network.